Today, I'm gonna to show you how to add photorealistic text to anything in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And this episode is so cool. You can use it for product mockups. You can use it for it, basically anything you wanna throw text on, whether it's a picture of me or your food or most likely a product or some kind of mockup you're doing. You can use these techniques to add text and make it look super realistic. You can put it on anything. So basically this entire tutorial focuses on integrating text with an object. So we take all the different principles of the object and apply it to the text. You're gonna learn how to transform the text in perspective to make it look like it's on there in 3D. We're gonna light the text. We're gonna add highlights and shadows. We're gonna show you how to use a displacement map, which I know sounds complicated, but it's really easy to use. Basically, it makes the text actually look like it's imprinted on the object, like it actually changed the outline of the text. And we're gonna show you how to take the texture that's on the book and paste it back over top of the text. So by the time that we're done, it's gonna look like this text is actually a part of the book. This is an incredible episode, it's super easy to do. Let's get into it. So here's our image for today. Now we're gonna be adding a quote to the front of this book. We're gonna do all kinds of stuff, like make the texture actually look like it's on the writing. And to start with, we're gonna pull our quote. This is by JK Rowling. Every human life is worth the same and worth saving. Alleluia. Actually, Alleluia doesn't make any sense, but hey, we'll go with it. So let's hit our T for the type tool. I'm gonna click and drag to make a text box. So let's go ahead and click and drag. It's gonna be around the cover. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit Controller Command V. That's gonna paste that in. Now let's go to our checkbox there. Now let's go to our uh, character menu. You can go to Window and down to Character to get to this. And we're gonna go ahead and make our size just a little bit larger. Let's make sure we're aligned to the left. That looks good. I'm just using Times New Roman here. Bold looks pretty good. All right, every human life. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, uh, JK Rowling here, this is, uh, this is just too large. So let's go ahead and highlight that. We're gonna lower the size of uh, our author here. There we go. And let's just go ahead and hit enter on there. All right, now let's, I'm just gonna make this whole thing a little bit larger and we'll use our move tool to kind of put it about in place. Let's make it a little bit larger there. Okay, now what you'll probably notice here is it doesn't look like it's actually in the photograph because look, the book is like kind of tilting like that. And uh, basically we just need to adjust this. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna first turn this into a smart object and that's gonna allow us to transform it and actually make it look like it's on the book itself. That's gonna allow us to also use smart filters. So if you got a smart object, you can use smart filters, which are really cool. We'll explain those as we go along. So jumping back in, we're gonna right click here Okay, everything looks good. It looks how we want it. We're gonna right click here. I'm gonna go down to convert to a smart object. There we go. It no longer says T there. So this is a smart object. Now, if you wanna edit your type at any time, you can simply double click here. There we go. And you can see I could just go in here and change it. Like I could add all kinds of stuff out if I wanted to. Okay, but now as a smart object, what I can do is click on my move tool here and I can hold Control or Command and click on this top corner and check this out. I can simply click and drag this till it fits in the perspective of our photo. Okay, so basically you wanna just click and drag each of your corners up here just to make sure that they actually kinda of like match the perspective of your photograph. Let's go ahead and center that out a little bit more as well. All right, there we go, that looks really nice. You don't have to get this perfect, but uh, in this case, I, I do think that looks pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and hit Control or Command T again. Just go ahead and pull this up just a little bit more. All right, and there we go. Looks like we're in the right perspective now. So everything looks good in perspective, but you know what, these words, Look at that, if, especially if I zoom in, this just looks like it was done in Photoshop, right? They're, the edges are really too sharp. There's no, there's no detail in here. It doesn't look like it's actually like on the book itself. It looks really flat and uh, that's what we're going to be changing. So the first thing that we're gonna use is something called a displacement map. Now I know that sounds really scary, but basically it takes the lights and darks of your image itself and it uses those to add a little bit of like bumps to a layer and you can use this to make something look like it's actually stuck on to another object. So in this case, we're gonna make the text look like it's on the book. So all the bumps and stuff that are on the book, those are gonna be translated to the text. It's really cool, it's actually really easy to do. 
OK, so what we want to do is first I'm going to make this layer invisible. OK, and then I want to go in and enhance. So you can see we've got some highlights and shadows and texture here. I want to enhance that a little bit more. So let's go to our background layer here. I'm going to go to Layer, down to New Adjustment Layer. We'll go to Levels. There we are. And now I'm going to just take my white levels up, and we're going to take our black levels up. And see, I'm kind of trying to enhance this texture. So you can see now it's a lot more, you know, the highlights are lighter and the darks are a bit darker. OK, so we've enhanced this texture. So now that we've enhanced that, we're just going to go ahead and save this out as a Photoshop document. And this is going to be our displacement map. OK, not complicated here. That's just uh, it's got a fancy name. So let's go to File. We'll go down to Save As. OK, and I'm just going to throw this on my desktop here. Why not? We'll just go to a desktop. And I'm going to call this This Place. All right, and we're going to go ahead and save this out as a Photoshop document. So Displace.psd on my desktop. No big deal there. OK, so now that that's done, check this out. It's really cool. Let's make that layer invisible. We'll put our type back visible again. We're going to go to Filter, down here to Distort, and over to Displace. OK, so if you're going to use the Displace, you want to make sure you use a displacement map. There we go. So let's go to Displace. Now, this is how much displacement you're going to do. The larger the numbers, the more uh, like change you're going to have on your layer. Smaller the numbers, the less change. So I'm going to go to 2 on both of these, it's going to be like not that much of a change. And here it's going to ask if I want to stretch to fit all that stuff. But we're actually using an image that's the exact same size as our current image, because literally we just saved this exact image out. So stretch to fit, repeat around image, these actually don't mind. It doesn't matter here, because we're using an image that's the exact same size. So let's hit OK. Then it's going to ask us to load our displacement map. Well, we know where this is. This is displace.psd. We just put that on the desktop, right? So let's click there and hit Open and check that out. I'm going to zoom in. How cool is that? So it uses the actual little texture in the book itself to move these lines around. And because we made this a smart object, check it out. I can turn this off or on at any time. OK? I can double click on displacement, and I can make this one if I want to. OK, we'll just go back to our displace. So you can see it's a little bit less of an effect now. OK, I could double click on here. I could make this five if I wanted to. Look at that. You didn't know you were going to learn how to use displacement maps here, right? All right, that's a little bit too much. So we're going to go back to two. Uh, we're going to go back to two on this. So we'll go back to two on that, click on our displace. And there we go. I, that looks really good. Now, it's still a little bit too like clear, the edges, so we're going to add a tiny blur. So let's go to Filter, down to Blur, over to Gaussian Blur. All right, and we're going to do a blur of like, like really, really small blur, like 0.3 pixels looks pretty good there. 0.2 even looks pretty good. Now, again, it's a smart object. And the coolest thing about this smart object is check it out. I can make these things invisible and visible at any point in time. So now the text looks like it's on the book a little bit more. We got that texture going up. So now what we want to do is make the text look like it's interacting with the light. So it's got to have highlight on one side and shadow on the other. So we're going to create a new layer here. And I'm going to use my brush tool. And we're just going to sample this color. Now in this case, it's kind of cool because I already have an example of what like highlight and shadow looks like. So I'm going to use my brush tool and just simply sample this color. And I'm going to paint with a really large soft edge brush. We're just going to start painting over here on the right hand side. Now, you can see as of now, check it, it just looks, it's just covering everything. However, you can make this layer into a clipping mask, which means it's only going to show up where this layer is showing up, which is really cool. So to do that, simply right click and go down to create a clipping mask. And boom, check that out. It's only going to show up right there now. OK, so you can see basically it's just showing up on the, on the right hand side. And you can change your opacity and do all kinds of stuff with this. Now let's make another one. I'm going to clip this as well. And then we're going, to use our, uh, we're going to use a lighter color on this side. So we've got a lighter color and a darker color. So it went from like flat. Now it's got a little bit more depth to it, which is really nice. All right, and we can even go in here. You can add all, all kinds of fun stuff, which is, which is really cool. Clipping masks are just, they're the best. I really like them. All right, there we go. And maybe let's make it a little bit darker down there. All right, so you can use this totally color text and uh, really just add a lot of like nice variation.
that is going to definitely make it look like it's more uh, interacting with the light on the image. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn these layers off so you can see looking really flat and we're going to turn them back on. This gives it a little bit of depth. So that looks great. And our letters are interacting with the surface of the book, but they still need a little bit more texture over top of the letters. So we're gonna show you how to take the texture of the book and put it back over top of the letters. This is super cool. So to take the texture of the book itself, what I'm gonna do is simply duplicate the background layer. So let's click and drag this to the new layer icon. There we go. And I'm gonna pop this all the way on the very top. Okay, so it's on the top of everything. Next thing we're gonna do is desaturate this layer because I only wanna see texture really. So we'll go to image adjustments and down here to desaturate. There we go. And then check it out. I'm gonna right click on this and we're gonna go to create a clipping mask. So where's this gonna show up? Only over top of my text, right? Cool, huh? So it's only showing up over top of my text. Now I wanna change my blend mode from normal. We're gonna go down to soft light. Okay, so check this out now. Now we have this layer, we can see inside of each of these words, right? Before it was the edges, the displacement map, that's what took care of all these edges, which is super cool. Now inside the words themselves, look at that. It looks like it's printed, oh, made everything visible. It looks like it's printed on that book, which is really cool. Now, maybe it's a little bit too light or too dark. All you have to do is go on this layer and hit control or command L for your levels. And maybe I'll make my darks a little bit darker and my light's a little bit lighter. And that's just gonna kind of enhance that texture a little bit. All right, so check that out. Cool effect. Let's just make that visible and invisible. And it's like, whoa, it is really on that book. So not only the, do the letters here look like they're interacting with the book, but we got the actual texture of the book over top of the letters itself. And we're starting to look pretty dang real. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add just a little bit of depth. I'm gonna put a tiny bevel and emboss, which is gonna make the letters look like they're popping out of the book just a little bit. So to do our bevel and emboss, simply choose your layer here. We're gonna right click and go down to our blending options. There we go. Let's put that up there so we can see everything. And I wanna click where it says bevel and emboss. And right now you're gonna see, whoa, that looks horrible. So let's go ahead and bring our depth way down, okay? And our size way down as well. So our size, we're gonna have it zero. Okay, our depth we're gonna have really low, maybe one looks good. And we wanna change the angle, so you can check it out. The, the angle that you choose is going to display like where the light's come, coming from. So if I choose the light angle from the left, light's gonna come from the left side and shadow will be on the right side. And if I choose the other way, you're gonna see it's gonna kinda show the other way. This is like, you know, kinda coming from more on the top and this will be kinda coming from the side. So here's what we're gonna choose right, right there. Now you can also choose this to go up and down. In this case, we'll go up. So you can see, let's click that preview. It just adds a tiny little highlight on the left-hand side. Now, this highlight is white at this time. It doesn't look that realistic. So we just need a lighter version of this, which I can just pull from here. So where it says the highlight mode, here's our color. Let's just click there and I'm gonna use my eyedropper. You don't even, it automatically resorts to your eyedropper. So you just move off your colors here to your eyedropper. And there you go, just pull a highlight color from from this color that's already on there. Or you could just choose your own color. You could have a bright blue highlight if you want, but we're just gonna choose this color, make it look more realistic, okay? And then you can change your opacity here. So like how much of this do you actually want? And we're not gonna go overboard with it, just a little bit. And then the, the dark side is going to be black. That's totally fine on multiply. That's just gonna kind of darken that side up there. So let's hit okay. All right, well, check this out. We are looking really, really good. So let's go ahead and turn uh, let's go ahead and turn all these off and on to see what everything did. And again, we're using smart objects here, which means we can turn everything off and on. This is really the best way to edit. So this levels adjustment layer, let's start with this. This levels adjustment layer, we only had that on here to create the displacement map. I can just delete it. We don't even need it anymore. So here's our smart object, okay? And check it out. I can simply turn all this stuff off. So right now, this looks exactly like it did when we first put the text on there, right? So first thing we did, we had our smart filters, we created that displacement map, right? And that's what made it look like it's actually interacting with the book itself. We added a little bit of a blur to help the edges look more photorealistic, okay? Then we added some light and some dark to the image, just a little bit of uh, added some like light to the image. And then we popped over top this guy, which man, that sealed the deal in my opinion. That's really what makes that 
check it out. That's really what makes the texture kind of come through those letters. And man, those letters look like they are part of that book now. And the last thing we did is throw on that bevel and emboss, gives the letters a little bit of depth, and we are done. Okay guys, that's all there is to it. Now, don't forget, you can actually download this image on florin.com so you can follow along with this tutorial. Just follow the link in the description right down below. And if you do create some really boss image with text on it, make sure to upload it to Florin so you can share your work and everyone can see how awesome you are. Thanks so much guys, I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone. Today I'm gonna show you how to, today I'm gonna show you how to add, today I'll show you how to add, so basically the whole episode is about, so basically the whole episode, so basically this whole episode is taking your text and, so basically this whole, so basically the entire, all right.